Now we're going to turn to our first segment, and we're going to be talking to uh, we're going to be talking about how electricity may be used in the future. Right here in Arizona, it involves your home appliances, <laughs> such as your refrigerator, your washing machine, HVAC, uh, HVAC systems being synchronized to your utility company for peak and off-peak times, and for the use of batteries to reduce the load of peak time demand. A first of its kind anywhere for a third party to aggregate control of the energy use from your smart appliances. On the phone with us today to discuss this budding technology and how it can save homeowners money on energy is the chairwoman of the Arizona Corporation Commission, Commissioner Leah Marquez Peterson. It's good to have you on the show again. Hello, thanks, Aaron, for having me. Good afternoon. Yes, thank you for being uh, taking time on a Saturday to be with us. So uh, what can you tell us about this new technology and how can it save people money on their energy bills? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's an exciting new uh, tariff, I guess I'll, I'll call it. And let me back up by just explaining a little bit to your listeners our electric grid so they can kind of get an idea of what direction we're going at the commission with APS, which is the largest uh, electric uh, utility service in Arizona. It's based in the Phoenix area primarily. But the electric grid is a network of transmission lines and substations, transformers, poles, and wires that deliver electricity from the power plant to all of our homes and businesses. Many may know this was built in the 1890s, and it's Im- Im- improved upon as technology has advanced through each decade. Um, fast forward to today, um, we are in the process of building throughout the nation a smart grid, which means, in essence, that it allows for two-way communication between the utility and the customers. Uh, in other words, different aspects of the grid are connected to the Internet. And this really provides an unprecedented opportunity to move the energy industry into a new era of reliability, affordability, efficiencies that will really contribute to Arizona's economic and environmental health. And there are a lot of benefits to a smart grid. Um, what you were referencing earlier in your introduction was a first-of-its-kind-in-the-nation proposal that I was very proud to lead here in Arizona, specifically with APS in the Phoenix market and beyond where they serve, to provide an aggregation tariff. And what that means is that this would be a rate that they're currently working to put together with stakeholders that would help reduce the total cost to the grid uh, and shift the time of energy use and reducing the amount of energy needed during the most expensive times of day by allowing aggregators or companies that are pulling together a lot of these smart uh, new technologies so that uh, folks can utilize those to save money. The goal here is to have customers save money uh, at the most expensive times of day and determine a way in which they can utilize things like smart thermostats, uh, connected water heaters, connected pool pumps, Energy Star appliances, home energy monitoring devices, batteries. Uh, We're seeing a lot of new technology, and we yet hadn't had a, a a way in which to implement this in the state, and uh, APS is going to tackle this for the very first time, and my hope is to expand this to other utilities throughout the state in the near future. But it really is Mm -hmm. time to move forward with an interconnected uh, smart grid. Now, uh, prior to, uh, well, what what people are doing now to save money on uh, the electric bill is like if they have a large HVAC system or a large uh, thing that draws uh, energy during the middle part of the day is they'll actually have someone, uh, you know, th- they'll actually shut off the air conditioning in the middle of the day, <laughs> you know, and uh, then yeah. then they'll turn their 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 appliances back on, uh, you know, after off peak time. The same thing with doing their laundry and you know things like that. So this is basically doing that same thing, but possibly since you mentioned that two way communication with the uh, smart. Uh, with the smart uh, energy star devices, now they'll have a two-way communication with the uh, with the energy grid. Uh, is, is, yeah, is, absolutely. I, and as an example, like I live here in Tucson, so I have Tucson Electric Power, which doesn't yet have this ability. So I have a Nest smart thermostat on my wall in my house that I can control with an app on my phone and manually turn it up, turn it down. Mm-hmm. You know, put certain parameters in place to keep my kids controlled <laughs> with the air conditioner. Um, and then I use a time of use plan. That means that I use electricity, and then from three to seven, I try to greatly reduce my use of energy because that's the most expensive time during the day. Um, because, as you can imagine, the solar energy and, and other, um, well, primarily the solar energy doesn't run in the evening. So mm-hmm. we use other types of energy to 
to fuel our homes and uh, and our businesses and so on. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it manually here. The goal uh, with this first aggregation tariff in the APS territory is to have this us be interconnected where it's something that we can choose to have this two-way communication with the utility to really help us uh, control our energy use and to Mm -hmm. save money. Okay, we have a caller. Our good friend of ours, Charles Heller. Charles, are you there? Oh, great. You have a question? Yes, I do. Leah, thank you so much for your hard work for in public service. I really appreciate your energy, and I've known you for a long time, and you just you have a heart for service. There are oh, some of us out here who would really prefer not to have two-way communication. Those of us yeah. who, for instance, have refused the RFID meter. And for those of us who would like to prohibit, and pre- only for ourselves, not for everybody, for those of us who would like to stop any two-way communication, what process or protection is there in, uh, is there in place for those of us who want to prohibit that that from from our that transmission from two-way transmission from our houses? Yeah, thank you, Charles, and thanks for calling. And that's a great question. Uh, this is entirely voluntary. So even right today, APS, which again is the big utility up in Phoenix, has a program in which they can help control just your thermostat. So drop it a couple of points if uh, you want to be on a special program they have. But again, that's totally voluntary. This is really expanding that to uh, the ability for private companies, aggregators are calling them, who pull together all these different smart devices to really provide it as a toolbox, I guess, for, for consumers and, and small businesses that want to engage. But again, totally voluntary. People do not need to participate uh, at all so that if they don't want to have that kind of connection to the utility. And they don't have to f- uh, save money if they don't want to either. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, some yeah, people enjoy it driving, manually. Driving, yeah. the thermostat, driving the thermostat down to make it colder in their house. But what I'm saying is, is, is there any future protection built into this so that if they make it a non-voluntary program, there's a way that the, that the consumer could say, no, no, thank you, and I'll listen to my answer on the air. <laughs> yeah, thank Thanks, you, Charles. Charles. Re- really, your, your best protection is realizing that, you know, the five of us that are Arizona Corporation Commissioners are elected. We represent the entire state. That's an important opinion and perspective to express to all five of us. So if that were to ever come about, we realize that there are a number of people in Arizona who don't want to be connected, and it's something then that we could ensure that it would not be uh, mandated on homes throughout a particular territory. I think that's a reason why it's important to have elected commissioners. Right. And, you know, so so many people are going to be interested in that because uh, because of this privacy thing. People get very, very nervous whenever there's two-way communication outside of their house that they may not even be aware of uh, that that may be happening. It just makes people nervous. Uh, we have, uh, looks like we have two more callers here. Our line's starting to blow up a little bit. Uh, we have Great. Wayne on line two. Did you have a question? Yes, this is Wayne. And uh, uh, Leah, I appreciate everything you do uh, at the commission. I, it's one of the uh, areas of government I'm not really super familiar with. One of the things that I uh, concerns me about the increasing exposure of our our utility lines and power grid to the internet is the uh, increased vulnerability to hacking and it seems like the more connected we are the more more vulnerable we are what do you have to say about that yeah and and that's a good point wayne we actually i'm part of a national organization called NARUC, national association of regulatory utility commissioners because there are about 200 of us across the nation and we just had a workshop this week on cybersecurity. there was a threatened wastewater plant in Florida, and as they uh, were able to stop anything bad from happening, thank goodness, that information and data uh, quickly crossed the nation to all the the commissioners so that we could have a conversation about cybersecurity, and we have previously, but continue that conversation. So actually, we have a commission meeting on the 18th, so later this week, and on our agenda is um, to review what happened in Florida with that wastewater treatment plant and then also determine how are we prepared and what we need to be doing to make sure that not just our wastewater, but our, we regulate water and gas and electricity, railroad and pipeline safety, you know, really the infrastructure throughout the state. We need to ensure that all of that is secure mm-hmm. and, and safe from terrorist acts or other things like that. So that's certainly top of mind. It's a good question, Wayne. As we're starting to uh, wrap up things, uh, Leah, uh, th- there's a few more things that, uh, a few more questions um, about, you know, uh, just to give people the understanding, this is an opt-in only, 
uh, service, right? Uh, Correct. And, it, and it's only in Arizona public service territory at this time. They are putting the tariff or the rate together right now. So we have asked all the stakeholders to come to the table with APS, which operates in Phoenix and Douglas and Yuma and Prescott, so not in the Tucson area. Um, but we asked them to come together and propose this tariff, this rate to us by April 1st. Um, and so we not, have not seen the final uh, determination. If there's anyone listening to the show right now who is in this industry who could be an aggregator of smart technology, love for them to weigh in. They just need to email me uh, through our website at azcc.gov. Um, but it's something that's exciting, and we've had a lot of national attention to from other uh, companies and stakeholders and utilities who are interested in, in what we're doing uh, here in Arizona. Okay, uh, just and just to uh, address the other thing about the, about things being hacked in the future. So, um, any time that there is uh, any any time that there's something new that's out there. Okay, there's always a first generation, and then they find out all the bugs, and then, they, then there's a second generation, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and yeah. then th- th- things will always get fixed in the future. Uh, but um, there, you know, th- this is a budding technology, like, uh, like, like the uh, article that had mentioned, which is what we're responding to uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, this is a budding technology. It is uh, is cutting edge. Where it's the first of its type uh, to be uh, to to be even be implemented or even uh, entertained. We have uh, one more caller. We have just enough time for uh, one more question. We have Gary on line two again. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, for your guest. Uh, is this project going to be entailing uh, expanding infrastructure, uh, such as adding transformers? Uh, thank you. No, uh, the idea is to utilize the technology that's existing and, and be prepared for future technology that is uh, items that can be placed in consumers' homes, like the thermostats and the Energy Star appliances and so on, that could be interconnected with the grid. So it's the idea at this point is not to add any additional infrastructure. But it's really just to control the energy consumption of appliances, uh, uh, you know, uh, the HVA systems, you know, your your washing machine, th- things that you have in the house that consume a lot of power during the peak hours. So basically, this third party yeah. aggregator would be able to uh, control uh, when that thing kicks on per se. Yeah, and it's really about okay. the load shifting. So, so if you think of the high peak time when it costs us the most to utilize the energy and we need additional sources at that point, can we shift the load to a different time of day? Um, you know, things of that nature that would really help uh, regarding energy and capacity and demand reduction. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gary, for that question. Uh, uh, just to wrap things up, uh, the, on the 18th, uh, you had mentioned, uh, Leah, about uh, this uh, about this meeting uh, regarding uh, what happened at the wastewater plants in Florida. Yeah, yeah, we have a, a meeting, and, and folks can uh, watch online if they'd like and uh, be able to hear exactly what we're saying or read the minutes later, whatever they prefer. And again, our website is azcc.gov. Our photos are there also, the five commissioners, again, that we are elected statewide. So you can click on any of our names and send us an email if you have further input or or we couldn't get to your question today. 